Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Women drivers. Why didn't she stay on her side of the road? David, it's too beautiful a night to shout, even at women drivers. Well, I'd better stay beautiful, too. I'd murder you both if it started to rain. Getting me all the way down from Eastbrook just to go to Coney Island. I'm starting to think I'm as crazy as you are. You are? That's what's so congenial about you, Mama. Oh, it's a perfect night for Coney Island. Not too hot and not too cold. And there are going to be millions of stars. And seven million people. I see one already. Not a people, a star. That's Venus. The evening star. The goddess of love. Hmm. Isn't it bright of her to be the first one to show her face at night? Only she's not very bright. Oh, you're so little. David, how much further to Coney Island? Oh, it can't be much further. The traffic's terrific here. Coney Island. I haven't been there in 20 years. Why don't you say 30 while you're at not it? Not anywhere near 30, Mama, but I am almost 20. Though I must say it does feel like 30 sometimes. She's just in the mood for Coney Island tonight, Mother. A little daft in the noodle. Do you suppose Coney Island has changed since I've been there? I don't think you've changed since you've been there either. <laughs> You're right, David. She hasn't. A little taller, perhaps, but that's all. It used to be enormous. All roller coasters and bright lights and frozen custards. She thought of her stomach first then, too. First and always. Always? <laughs> what else do you remember? I think you were only four at the time. My father was with us. Coney Island was his idea. Just the way it was David's today. Only our son isn't four years old. At least we have one. He'll be four someday. Sooner than you think, too. Everything sooner than you think. Let's see, what else about Coney Island? I know the Ferris wheel. I sat way up on top of the Ferris wheel. I remember the ocean stretching far away. She was such a little thing, David. The three of us sat together, just as we three are sitting together now. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have come with you tonight. You're not crowding us, Mama. Plenty of room for three. And you're not too old, Mrs. Brown. I wonder. It's been a long time since... No, nobody's ever too old for Coney Island, didn't you know? Nobody's too young for it, either. Thank you for thinking for me, too, David. Oh. Well, we'll see. Pretty soon, too. We're almost there. I can smell the ocean. Oh, I love the ocean. David, it's too bad we haven't got an ocean instead of a brook on our farm. I'll have it arranged the first thing in the morning. Good. Mama, what are you thinking about so seriously? Mm, just thinking. Of all the amusement parks I went to with your father. There always seemed to be one close by. In New Hampshire one summer, that was before you were born, and there was one in Virginia. You were a year old then, and another in Delaware. Heavens, you certainly bought out the amusement park market, didn't you? Seems like a great many looking back. Confidentially, David, I think my father and mother were just as crazy as we are. You two are sober citizens by comparison. Don't, don't be so smug. Oh, um, we can't even be crazy uniquely. All right, now, women, make up your minds. Where do you want to go first? I want to begin at the beginning and end at the end. Mm, but who's to say where's the beginning? The David, point. why don't you just park the car and we'll attack Coney Island from the boardwalk? Good. Mrs. Brown, you have spoken like a veteran. Boardwalk first. Look at the boardwalk. It stretches for miles and miles and miles. It hasn't changed. Hardly at all. An amusement parks never do. They're the one thing that doesn't grow old, Mrs. What's Brown. that man shouting over there? See him? I think he's selling can openers. Let's go over and see. Come oh, on. You don't want to buy a can opener? Of course not, but just look at him. Look how hard he's working. The least we can do is listen to him. Come on, David. There's no use resisting. I suppose we'll get through this huddle faster by just letting her on her own way, huh? Just remember, Claudia, we have three perfectly good can openers at home. I told you, Mom. I wasn't intending to buy one. It's not the money, darling. It's just that... It's a nuisance to lug a package around when we go on the ride. Of course, David. I know what you're arguing about. It's the super duper can opener. The only one of its kind opens the can and holds on to the lid afterwards so it won't drop into your edibles. Now crowd around, folks, and stand closer. 
And I don't chew crowd too much. Here's enough can openers for each and every one of you. Now, Sounds amazing. This yes, little doesn't one. It? Does any one of our can openers can do that, Mama? Not, not a one. I don't think any of ours have half the personality this one has. Right. Come on, let's get closer. Now, remember, girls, you're only here for the ride, huh? Of course, David. Of course, stop worrying, Now, darling. step closer, lady. Step closer. Let me see the whites of your eyes. That's right. Now, that's an old trick. He gets you so close, you're afraid not to buy something. Oh, now, here we are. Notice the beautiful stainless steel finish in this gadget. Spotless, forever clean and pure. Now, notice the sharpness of the teeth. Self-grinding. You'll never have to have them ground. And now I demonstrate and hold on to your hats because never in your life have you seen such a can opener. No modern kitchen, no housewife. Who prides herself on the efficiency of a kingdom should allow another moment to go by without buying such a can opener. Up to I'm watching, Claudia. Shh. As easy as a steak knife through butter. It really looks just that easy. What will they invent next? And now notice, come closer, come closer, ladies. I don't want you to miss the climax of this demonstration. Notice how this can opener grips, and I mean grips, the separated lid of the can. Well, it actually does. I can see for myself. Claudia. And there you are. Now, have you ever seen anything with the like of it? Perhaps you have, but at what a price. This can opener in New York City proper costs at least one dollar a hundred cents. But what do you pay for it here? The same can opener, the very same, but cheaper because we have no expensive display and you are buying it directly from me. You pay only twenty-five cents, one quarter of a dollar, two bits, two dimes, and one nickel. Mama, what do you think? We don't dare, do we? Oh, I guess not. Now, just one moment, please. Do not push and crowd take your time. Now, listen to my full offer. With this can opener, I sell you this plastic apple corer, this sensational new apple peeler. And wait a minute, that's not all. And this special artistic instrument for cutting your vegetables into attractive forms and shapes. Mama, what a yes, buy! You remember what David said. Look at well me look so nutrition. serious. I wouldn't dare buy anything. Now look at it. These four articles, unique and indispensable. Unique and indispensable. Every good housewife appreciates them. Would sell in New York City proper for at least four dollars and thirty cents. <gasps> and for what do I give it to you? One dollar, one single dollar, an old dollar, or a new dollar, one hundred pennies, ten dimes, or twenty nickels. Now who's gonna be first? Speak up. Speak up, don't be shy. There's a limited quantity, so speak up. I'll have one. David! Oh, here's your dollar. Thank My you. own son in law. To the gentleman in the blue tie, here you are, sir, and you'll never be sorry. I'm never. Sure, I won't be. All right, Will I? David, one, what have you, you done? You know these never hey, work when you get them sick. home. Well, Claudia, my bride and love, a right, present lady, for you. you Just what you've been pining oh, for. Oh, don't pull that on me, Mr. David Norton. These kitchen implements are yours. No, no, I, I bought them for you. <laughs> oh, Mama. <laughs> Claudia. I wonder what came over me. Nothing came over you, darling. In Coney Island, even men are suckers. Isn't it wonderful? All right, all right. Believe what you will. All right, all right. ladies and gentlemen, gather round. Hey, 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 come on, let's get out of here quick. Stay <laughs> too, David. Or you can take a free breath without having to pay for it. On, on to the merry-go-round. I wish this thing would stop. I'm getting dizzy. David, I've got 14 rings so far. <laughs> come on, get up, War Admiral, get up. I hold silver. <laughs> you look just like you're riding the rain. Oh, we'll stride the kitchen stove. Heavens, I must be dizzier than I think. <laughs> David, I caught 19 rings. And what'd you get? Look at this beautiful, funny-faced doll, all mine. Oh, I'm way ahead of you. How many did you catch? With one ring, I got a beautiful, funny-faced doll, too. Where, David? Behind the nose that I'm about to kiss. Oh, darling, I still got the best of the bargain. Phew! I'm all askew. Mrs. Brown, you look stunning askew. Let's be on our way. On to the roller coaster. I'm after you, Mrs. Brown. On that thing? I should say not. Mama, you were going on those things before I was born. All the more reason I don't have to do it now. Oh, but look Come at what on. it says. The thrill of a lifetime. Breathtaking, death-defying, the 90-degree drop. The Alps of Coney Island. <laughs> David, hold me tight, Come David. On, honey. How you doing, Mother? Never again. Here we go. Hold on. Here we go. <laughs> Even 
and I'm tired. Ooh. Thank goodness. And stuffed. Peanuts, frozen custards. I don't know what I've eaten. Well, that must have been <laughs> on at least 20 rides, not counting the batch <sighs> of the crazy fun house. Well, I've saved the best one for last. You mean there's one we haven't been on? Oh, yes, the Ferris wheel. <laughs> not for me. I've had enough, and this time I mean it. What about you, darling? Oh, never enough without a Ferris wheel, David. <laughs> David, look at the ocean stretching away. I feel a million miles above the earth, swinging way up here in this little cage. Would you? Oh, just like sitting on a cloud. See Mama by the bench down there, all alone again. Well, she's had her amusement parks, too. She doesn't mind now. I know. Coney Island. Look at all the bright lights. Beyond them, the night, all dark. Here, it's all music. Everyone smiles. And no one grows old. It's only an island. Like fairyland, you always wake up. Yes, I guess you're right. But still, there's another way to think about it. There are Coney Islands every place, darling. That is, they're there for those who want to find them. I've found mine for life. Kiss me, David. Way up here in the middle of heaven where there's nobody to watch but the angels. <laughs> Breakfast to cook, dishes to do, beds to make, and house to clean. And that's just the beginning for most of you women who superintend households. Why not take a breather, pause, and refresh with ice-cold Coca-Cola? It's coming to you. And it actually helps get your jobs done when you refresh along the way. Coke costs so little that everyone can afford to work refreshed. Oh, Mr. King, do I look the way I feel? Well, uh, judging by the way you look, well, how do you feel, Mrs. Brown? Completely undone to the four winds. Exhausted. <laughs> you don't really look that way. You look calm, collected, and as Claudia would say, cool as a pickle. Well, that's very sweet of you to say that, but, oh, well, we're on our way home, so it little matters. Did you enjoy yourself? We had a perfect time. Make-believe land is always fun, isn't it? I think so. All kinds of make-believe land. Coney Island, circuses, the theater. The theater? That's Claudia's favorite kind. Well, good. She's going to have her chance at it. Really? Well, you've always thought Claudia was a very good actress, haven't you? Well, not bad. The proof of the pudding is in the making. Your daughter, Mrs. Brown, is going to have her chance to prove herself. I'm rather looking forward to that, so I'll be around tomorrow. See you, Mr. King. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs>